Firstly, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizer of this uh, of this colloquium, of this fantastic fantastic colloquium, especially Igor, Natasha. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to skip uh, some parts of my presentation in order to save time for the next speaker because uh, we are uh, in, in delay. And I'm going to talk about clean title. Probably uh, this is the shortest title in history on presentations because only two words, clean title. It's the shortest title, but probably uh, or, or the title uh, is uh, and the topic is very wide and important topic on the on the convention. Uh, the clean title term appears in four uh, sections on the on the current draft instrument, the working paper eighty seven, and the consideration in the next uh, working group session. The first reference is located in the definition, of course, Article one point B. The second reference is on the scope of application provision, Article 3.1. Uh, uh, the, the third reference is located on the certificate provision, Article uh, 5.1. And the last uh, reference uh, we find in the international effects, Article 6.1. Uh, um, what is the, or the first idea I would like to, to mention is the uh, clean title fulfilled at one function in the convention. The first function of the clean title is as a condition for the application of the instrument in the state of the judicial sale. Uh, the, the convention, Article 3, as I mentioned before, says that the convention applies only to a judicial sale of ship if and this is the condition, under the law of the state of the sale, that sale confers clean title to the ship on the purchaser. And the second function, uh, function of the clean title is as effect. As effect in the different states in which the uh, sale is going to produce its legal uh, effect. Uh, Article says, uh, state that under the fulfillment of certain requirements, all of you know what are those requirements, the, 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 the ship was fiscal in the jurisdiction, the law of the state, etc., under the uh, notification requirements. Uh, so under the fulfillment of those requirements, the judicial sale have the effect in other state party of conferring clean title to the ship on the purchaser. Uh, so, but how is the materialization of this uh, effect, of this clean title effect? The materialization is, as you can see in the, in, in, in the screen, delation or cancellation of registered charge or mortgages in the state of the register. And the second uh, materialization of this effect is in case of arrest of the ship, release the ship for previous registered or unregistered charges. This action shall be carried out by the uh, court. Uh, I'm going to skip some, uh, the, some or questions about the definition of the term clean title, just only one uh, important issue. The, the current definition uh, is uh, any title to or right, you can, you can see in the, in the screen, any title to or rights and interest in the ship existing prior to its judicial sale have been extinguished. This is the first part of the, of the definition. Uh, this first part is referring to title, rights and interest and the consequence of this kind of um, or right, or this kind of rights is the extinction. But in the second part, uh, the, the definition is dealing with the charge or mortgages and the consequence of the clean title over this charge of, or mortgages is those cease to attach the ship. And I, I would like to mention this difference because in the second part, in case of charge or mortgages, the complete extinction, why the, the, the definition does not refer to the extinction 
and refers instead to the cease to attach to the ship. Because in case of charges or mortgages, the complete extinction does not take place at the time of the sale because reminds the right to participate in the distribution of the proceeds. So the, 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 the right from the um, creditors is transferred to the proceeds of the sale in accordance with the priority rule. So the complete extinction occurs when the distribution of the proceeds of the sale take place whether the claims are satisfied or not. Still, the impersonal credits, but not the in-rem claim. Um, which are the situation in which the, or what are the situations in which the clean title um, enter into play? Well, the first uh, or the most important situation is in case of a uh, court, in case of a judicial sale, the first question is, is this sale, imagine a situation in which a national court has granted a, a sale of a ship. Is this sale under the scope of the convention? And who has the competence to answer this question? The issuing authority, because the issuing authority of the certificate has the obligation to record in that certificate that the purchaser acquired clean title to the ship. This is the uh, wording of Article 5 of the, of the Convention. So it's a question of analyzing if the effect of the sale on the national law includes the total purge of trade in the sense of the Convention, according to its own definition, according to the definition of the clean title state on the Convention. If the answer is yes, so if the, um, the, the judicial sale, the domestic judicial sale includes the pure of crates according to the definition of the convention, if the answer is yes, then the uh, issuing authority is going to uh, shall a certificate with the clean title effect. So we are under a uniform or uh, judicial sale, not, a, not only a domestic judicial sale, we are under the effects of the, of the convention. If the answer is not, the authority shall not issue a certificate. So this judicial sale, this domestic judicial sale shall be out of the scope of the, um, of the convention. And now I'm going to focus on the on, as I identify three important problematic issues or hardless. The first one is what's happening in case of a registered variable charter. Uh, the, second, uh, the second problem that is almost resolved in the convention is what's happening with charges assumed by the purchaser. And the last one is what's happening in case of security interest, not over the ship, the entire ship, security interest register over some parts or fittings over the ship. Well, what happened in case of, uh, of, of variable? Imagine the situation in which we have a, a, a variable charter and this charter is registered. This ship is arrested and then followed by a judicial sale. What's happened in case of this um, of this court, the, for example, the Spanish court, uh, that is my, my, my country, uh, the Spanish court is going to apply for this sale, the Spanish legislation on judicial sale. Under our domestic law, you, you, you can see a, the, um, a box in, in, in yellow color. This is our law. Our law says, as a consequence of a judicial sale, all registered mortgages and encumbrances and all maritime liens and charges shall be extinguished and their cancellation shall be ordered. So under our law, the judicial sale conducted in Spain grants clean title on the purchaser. But at the same time, our Maritime Navigation Act says, says that in the event of sale, the purchaser shall be subrogated in the existing bar agreement. 
So the purchaser shall maintain in the Pacific possession of the charter, to, sorry, in the Pacific possession to the charter. So we have a problem in Spain, for example. Our sale grants clean title in the purchaser, but at the same time, the, um, the purchaser shall maintain in the possession to the charter. Why? Because for in Spain, the barbo charter is not is just only possession. It's not a right in rem. Okay, so the barbo is not extinguished with the judicial sale. What's happening in another jurisdiction? Uh, for example, judicial sale grants again clean title over the ship, but in other jurisdiction probably. Barabout agreement might be tried, might be treated as a right in rem or a kind of possessory interest. So in this case, the variable does not survive as happened in Spain with the judicial sale. So the Spanish authority, the Spanish issuing authority of the certificate, is going to issue a clean title certificate under our under our law, the Spanish law. The answer is yes we are going to issue a certificate, a clean title certificate because under our law, the, uh, the, the judicial sale grants clean title on the purchaser, even the mandatory supervision of the purchaser in the bar vote. In another jurisdiction, as I mentioned before, the issuing authority is going to issue a clean title certificate. The answer is again, yes, because the law does not preserve the rights of a registered charter. So we have similar situations, but with different results. So the question is, what is the purpose of the convention for or re regarding variable agreement, re registered variable agreement? Is the aim of the convention preserves the rights of the charters or not? So in, in this, in this moment, and this is my opinion, of course, a necessary clarification will be whether for the recognition of a clean title, the law of the state of the judicial sale has to clearly mention that the borrowable charter does not affect the new purchaser. And I propose two different possibilities in this respect. The first one is a specific addition on the definition of the clean title. Addition with a similar text, uh, such as the next one. Any provision, any sorry, any previous variable charter does not affect or does not bind the new purchaser by virtue of the judicial sale. Because with this provision, very specific provision, when the Spanish authority is going to issue the clean title certificate. It's going to read the definition of clean title and it's going to say, oh, with this provision, any previous variable charters does not affect or bind the new purchaser because in my own country, the variable charter survives to the judicial sale. I cannot issue a certificate for clean title. Or another possibility in wider terms, include in the definition of clean title, something like any possessory interest or something like that. In both cases, in both cases, we are going to avoid this situation in which similar, in which similar situations produce different results. So if the purpose of the convention is as I mentioned, to preserve, so, sorry, it's not preserve the rights of the registered charters, I think a necessary clarification is needed. Um, the, the second uh, problem that I, uh, regarding the clean title, is charge assumed by the purchaser. Many jurisdictions consider the possibility that in a judicial sale, the purchaser may subrogate 
with the consent of the creators in those pre-existing charges or mortgages on the ship. And this is the case again in Spain. The, uh, the law in Spain says as a consequence of a judicial sale or registered mortgages and encumbrances, except those the purchaser may assume with the consent of the creators. The beginning draft, uh, assuming the wording of the Geneva Convention 1993, accepted those charge or mortgages assumed by the purchaser from the acquired claim title. But what happened during the working group session, the delegations found very difficult to regulate how the court of the state of the judicial sale um, is going to issue a certificate with exceptions on the basis that those accepting rights and interest uh, were assumed by the purchaser might be problematic. And because many delegations says that in practice, purchasers did not assume existing mortgages or charges. So in, 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 in here, the, the common example of this provision is a purchaser who assumed a registered uh, mortgage and then sought to re register the SIP and transfer the mortgage to the new registry. Probably he's going to face some problematic situation in this process with the new uh, register. So in order to avoid this challenging approach, the working group has agreed at the moment to maintain the omission of these charges in the clean title definition. So the result is in case of a judicial sale, for example, in Spain, in which the purchaser assumed previous charges, that judicial sale shall be out of the scope of the convention. I don't know if this, this legislative option is the best one or not, because, and this is a fact, the Beijing draft contemplated this provision, and the previous convention, the Geneva Convention from 1993 as well, um, contemplated the, this convention. Probably the, uh, the, the, the delegations or the working group in general um, is considering an absolute clean title. And in this case, charge assumed by the purchaser entering into conflict with this absolute clean title concept. Um, but it's, um, this, is a, this is a fact, with this legislative option, the convention is reducing its own scope of application. And the last uh, problem that I would like to mention is uh, security interest overfittings. Imagine again the situation uh, of a ship with a registered mortgage and in addition with a registered mortgages or mortgage, sorry, we have a registered charge or mortgage or pledge over an integral component or fitting over the ship. For example, a uh, mobile uh, security over the engine of the ship, over the electrical systems, over the propellers, etc. And in, in a similar situation, what happened with the aircraft? Okay, that is quite uh, common, different mortgage over the, sh over the uh, plane and over the motors or the engines, for example. So what's happening in case of judicial sale? Well, the clean title is going to affect the register and mortgage, the register mortgages, and this mortgage shall cease to attach the ship. This is the effect of the judicial sale of the clean title. But what's happened with the register mortgage, the register charge over the engine? Is this mortgage sold to cease to attach the ship? And under my point of view, we have under a problem of the definition of the ship under the convention. Is the ship, is the ship, or, or is the convention thinking on the entire ship when it talks about ships on the text? Because what's happened with the parts of the ship in case of a separate uh, pledges or a separate mortgages. The, the convention has chosen to not define the ship. 
or at least in these terms. Defines the ship or talk about ships when talks about the um, warships or uh, public ships, etc. But not in this uh, in this case. So, also the ship is not defining the instrument. It's a domestic law problem. What what is the definition of the ship in the state of the judicial state? What's happened, for example, in Spain? We have an article in our uh, Maritime Navigation Act that says legal transactions related to the ship and then the judicial sale is included. The ownership thereof shall include its integral components and fittings. Well, under this first paragraph, there is no problem. The ship includes integral components and fittings. So the, the, the question, as I mentioned before, is the part of the ship treated as a whole ship? And the answer is yes. But the second paragraph of the article says, not with, notwithstanding this, it does not include integral components and fittings registers at the register of movable assets. So under this second paragraph, in case of registered security interest over parts of the ship, such as the engine or propellers or whatever, those components are not part of the ship. So those interests or rights or, or charges are not under the clean title term on the, con on, the uh, on the convention. So the purchaser is not granted with a clean title or with a clean sale. And again, this is a problem of definition of the ship. And this is, under my point of view, um, a, a, again, a necessary clarification for the convention. But not only regarding the ship itself. What's happened with the creditors, those creditors, the creditors of or, or charges or mortgages over part of the ship. Are those creditors between the persons that under Article 4 of the uh, Convention must be notified? Because the articles come, our article says, or list the owner of the ship, the register, the uh, lien holders, the mortgagee, etc but always is referring to the ship. It's referring Article 4, the creditors of this kind of charges. And, and this question is important because what's up is, or may this situation in case of failure of notification trigger the public policy grounds for the refusal of the judicial sale? Uh, and, 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 and I'm finishing my presentation. Both uh, pro the three least problems, the variable charter, the uh, charge assumed by the purchaser, and especially this security interest over fittings, um, require a further analysis in the working group. And this is my opinion. Probably it's uh, wrong opinion, but it's my, 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 my or I consider this. So the conclusions uh, regarding the form of the of the instrument, uh, um, the, the, the working group is discussing which is the, the, the form of the instrument. Uh, it seems that the, um, the, the or, or exists an agreement that the form of the convention must be, uh, sorry, the form of the instrument must be a convention. I completely agree with, with that. Uh, the, in, in, our, in our case in, in Spain, the, the Spanish Maritime uh, Association uh, is pushing in favor, is pushing in favor of, of this instrument, especially in form of the convention. Uh, and, and an absolute clean title, if this is the aim of the convention, is quite ambitious and probably too difficult to acquire in many jurisdictions. As I mentioned in Spain, the problem with variable charter, the problem with charge assumed by the purchasers, and the problem with the security interest overfittings. 
Um, so my conclusion is some aspects of the con of the convention. These three, as I mentioned, refers with the clean title term. Still need to be under further analysis. I know that the the, the current text, the the working paper at eighty seven or the second revision of the text is not the final version. But in my opinion, uh, the current uh, the current text uh, needs uh, a, 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 a new or in some cases a further analysis. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, many thanks, Juan Pablo. Uh, are there any questions or comments on the last two speakers? Um, I don't have a, a question, but I, I, I have three brief observations to make on Juan, Pablo, um, uh, Juan Pablo's presentation, which I found extremely interesting. Um, uh, as of course was Harman, thank you for the um, animated ending to your um, presentation that pro brought it all into, um, uh, into, into perspective. Juan Pablo, two, two observations, which are very, from a very practical perspective here. Um, I, I, I understood what you said about the situation in Spain. Um, starting with the issue relating to the bareboat charter. So the bareboat charter of a vessel um, is unaffected by a normal judicial sale by auction because his rights as a bareboat charterer will survive that. Now, practical consideration. If in actual fact there is a valid bareboat charterer and a valid bareboat charter, and the bareboat charterer is paying his bareboat charter higher, then uh, which would be the sole income of the underlying owner, correct? That the, if it's under bareboat charter, the owner, the underlying owner, would not have any other form of income except that bareboat charter registered higher. So if there is that higher coming in, um, the probability is number one that the ship owner isn't going to have any debts. Number two, because under a bare boat charter, it is the bare boat charterer who, who is going to buy the bunkers, who is going to do anything of the sort, who is going to engage the crew, who is responsible for the payment of the crew. And if the original underlying owner still has a mortgage, it would have been part and parcel of the bare boat charter agreement for the higher purchase to be paid to the mortgagees. So, conclusion on that point, although in theory, you are correct, there may be a problem. In practice, I need uh, to understand how it can possibly arise, because on the basis of what I've just said, if the bare boat charterer is honoring his obligations under the bare boat charter, then the vessel would never have lent itself to be arrested and to be sold in a judicial sale by auction, I think, from where I'm standing. That's point number one. Point number two, with regard to the um, assumed by the purchaser. Okay, so in some jurisdictions, um, a purchaser may assume these obligations. First of all, to have clarity, um, the effect must be a free and unencumbered title, which is why as a result of the first and the second um, set of meetings, it was agreed, there was very broad consensus that this um, convention will only apply to those judicial sales in jurisdiction where there is a free and unencumbered title. But assuming that there is an assumption of the buyer of any of these outstanding debts. Again, in practice, what will happen is that the mortgagee, for instance, will deregister his mortgage as against the old owner and will re-register re re a new mortgage in, in favor of the new owner. So that assumption can still take place. I don't, it, it, it won't be a deal breaker because if the, if the new buyer is prepared to assume, then he will assume by coming into an agreement with these um, holders of the security and making, them, and making them his own under the new ownership. So I think that, that problem will be solved as well. Problem number, point number three, with regard to the issue of the uh, registered assets. I must admit that um, in my personal experience, I have never 
ever come across a situation where, I don't know about the, the other people on this um, um, colloquium, I have never come across a situation where a vessel is about to be sold in a judicial sale and somebody turns up with a registered interest on an engine. I know that in aircraft it's quite common, it's quite common. I personally have, have never had one of these cases. Um, uh, I, I know, and I know certainly under the Maltese register of ships, you can't do that. Certainly in a number of other um, flag registries, we register vessels and their appurtenances, in fact, and the whole lot. So um, I, I would be more, I would be very interested to, to perhaps during the debate in, in Vienna to hear more about this uh, regist possible registration of a security right in part of the ship. I've never come across it, and I'd be very interested to know which, which jurisdictions um, would actually um, have something like this. Thank you very much. Yeah, Juan Pablo, would you like to... Um, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Anne, for your comments. Uh, well, the, the first, uh, or my first uh, word is, I'm an, I'm an academic, I'm, I'm not a practitioner, so I'm pointing out problems in a theoretical uh, scenario. Because, uh, well, this is my, my duty as, a, as an academic, put the uh, theoretical uh, or try to uh, figure out theoretical uh, problems in order to avoid in future uh, text. Uh, you are very or completely right in case of um, feelings, Probably uh, neither in Malta neither in, nor in Spain uh, exist much charges or pledges over feedings uh, or over parts of, of the ship, but could be, uh, or under my point of view, uh, it's an option. Probably it's not in, in the real world or in the, in the, in the day to day world, but it's an option and probably the convention must to anticipate this problem i don't know i don't know I'm, I'm, uh, but well it's it's as, as i as i mentioned uh, are uh, theoretical problems in 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 future um and but th thank you very much for your for your consideration in case of charge assumed by the purchaser um well this um this exclusion was contemplated in the beijing draft drafted by cmi uh, and uh, again, and as well, was uh, uh, introduced in the Geneva Convention 1993. So my question is, I don't know why the working group, and I'm attending to the different sessions of the, of the working group, I, I'm not sure why the, the working group has agreed to delay this exception. Probably it's because the convention wants to uh, an absolute, as I mentioned, an absolute clean title. But I don't know why the uh, charge assumed by the purchaser is an obstacle in this clean title because if an option made by the purchaser. So, well, this is my, 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 my idea. But thank you very much, Anne, for your comment. Many thanks. Anybody else? May I join in? Of course. Hello? Yeah, am I in the air? <laughs> well, uh, I think it's very interesting uh, what uh, Juan Paolo uh, told us and we uh, discussed that in uh, Vienna and I remember that the German uh, colleagues and the Japanese colleagues had a problem with the uh, bailboat charter. And uh, in those discussions, a uh, following uh, possible solution arose. So if we add a uh, bailboat charter in the charges, then it means if there's a, a jurisdiction where the verbal char charter survives uh, the sale, then the clean title would not be issued uh, because uh, it is quite important if I buy a ship that I know whether I can use it freely or there are uh, restrictions because I can buy a ship for a specific uh, trade 
And then I said, no, no, you can't do it because uh, there is a Melbourne Charter. So the idea is, because it might be quite a, a rare uh, situation, Japanese, obviously Germans have the same, but they say you can cancel or renounce uh, the Melbourne Charter. So it survives, it follows the ship, but you can renounce it. So, no, no, I, I don't want you uh, to uh, be a Melbourne Charter on my ship anymore. So uh, then solution suggested was that uh, uh, we have a public auction and if uh, the Verbo Charter survives in that particular jurisdiction, then the clean title, the, the clean title would not be issued because uh, the ship, uh, if there is no uh, a, a, a right in REM, anyhow, there is a restriction on the, on the uh, free use. Uh, so that, that was then uh, discussed and especially Japanese colleagues uh, were worried about that. And uh, secondly, I think uh, this is the, the, about the equipment and the leasing the equipment or uh, using uh, somebody else's equipment on your ship and the ship is uh, arrested. And uh, you, uh, I mean, the claim has the right to uh, arrest the ship and then you say, haha, no, no, this uh, uh, electrical equipment is not, is not mine. So other people uh, are coming in and trying to distinguish the ship from their own uh, possessions. And so it might be just a minor uh, part of the equipment, which uh, uh, is not worth uh, much in proportion to the value of the ship, but it might be some uh, quite uh, uh, expensive equipment to, for example, tomorrow this uh, uh, equipment uh, for uh, ballast waters and others might be leased uh, or, or borrowed or in any, uh, there might be even some producers who would give you the uh, equipment uh, and you could, could uh, buy it only if it works well within three or four months or something like that. So I think this is, this is an interesting uh, question and uh, uh, I think uh, attention should be paid to it. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to uh, contribute? Well, if I may, uh, Peter Lorison, uh, CMB. Um, maybe one comment with respect to the uh, bare boat charters, and another one with respect to the, um, I would say, the apparel of the vessel, which is uh, movable on board the vessel and which might be affected by registered uh, charges. Uh, to start uh, with that uh, topic, I think in practice it might be uh, that there are movable parts on board the vessel. We call them spare parts. It's, uh, quite often vessels are carrying uh, spare propellers or uh, spare pistons or other stuff. And it might well be that in the sale contract by which the ship owner bought that um, spare part from the manufacturer, there is a clause of reservation of uh, property. So that even though it's still on board, it actually belongs to someone else. But I don't think this um, necessarily has to be a problem under this uh, draft instrument, because there are many objects on board the vessel when it goes into a judicial sale, which are not the property of the owner. There are the personal belongings of the captain and the crew. Uh, there are documents um, and uh, installations, software quite often, which are the property of the ship manager, not of the ship owner. So I think that, um, and um, probably Harman, um, who does a lot of judicial sales, and those all the practicalities and the practicals ins and outs. I think that those um, movable properties, including spare parts, for instance, affected by a registered charge, are excluded from the judicial sale and not part of the vessel as such. Just a remark uh, I wanted to make, and I see that Harman is nodding, so I feel comfortable about that. Um, second remark with respect to the Berbo charters, and I can fully subscribe to what Anne Fennick uh, said before. But maybe there's one point of interest I would like to add on top of that. Um, that is, um, we were discussing the situation where the buyer of the ship, the purchaser, wants the Berbo charter to end. <clears throat> but if we turn it a bit differently and we look at the Berbo uh, charterer, so the part the ship operator who is um, chartering the vessel, I think he has an even bigger interest in um, terminating the Berbo charter party because he is operating a ship, he's, uh, he's looking for cargoes, he's uh, carrying cargoes uh, across uh, the oceans. 
Um, usually when a ship is arrested, uh, the ship is cargo free because if she is arrested with cargo on board, then uh, the buyer, the purchaser, the arresting party will incur liabilities uh, or may incur liabilities with respect to the cargo under the bills of lading or charter party. Um, so usually the ship is cargo free and as a bare boat charterer, um, if my bare boat uh, owner, if the owner is in financial difficulties and he is in such tiny such uh, big financial difficulties that the vessel has been uh, arrested under a conservatory arrest and even more in the second stage um, the vessel is being put up for auction then I as a bare boat charterer I will 99.9% uh, .9 of all cases I will terminate the bare boat charter myself and uh, typical bare boat charter parties such as the ones which are I would say commonly, co commonly uh, used like the BIMCO bear cone they provide for very, very few cases in which the bare boat charterer can terminate uh, the bare boat charter party. But one of those um, causes for which um, the bare boat charter can terminate the charter party is the insolvency of the bare boat owner. So I think that the discussion with respect to the bare boat charters, um, that this is an important factor as well, which should not be uh, lost out of sight. Thank you. That was what I wanted to say. Uh, if I can uh, uh, say a few things uh, uh, with regard to the bare boat charter issue. I, I, I fully agree uh, uh, with uh, Peter as uh, it, it is uh, from the practice point of view, it is always in the interest of the bare boat charter to terminate such a bare boat charter. But in, in certain cases, the bare boat charter might be just uh, an entity within the the group of the uh, a company whereby the uh, register ship owner is just a, uh, or, or the bearable charter is just a subsidy of, of the of the sh uh, register ship owners in which case also it's it's easy uh, to uh, to cancel or to terminate such a bearable charter between the uh, the, the 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 same uh, uh, companies with the same uh, same group. So I, I just wanted to say that that I fully agree with, with uh, Peter's uh, 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 view with regard to the uh, verbal charter uh, issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Just to say, in the last judicial sale we had in Malta, going back to Peter's point and the assets on board, that's exactly it. If, if there is a matter of a lease, not ownership, with a registration of the security mm. interest, if it's a matter of a lease of equipment, if it's a matter of lending equipment, if it's a matter of use of equipment, which does not belong to the vessel, and is not mm -hmm. considered as part of the owners. That's excluded from the sale. In fact, yes. the, last, um, uh, the last sale we had had a lot of cranes on board and the cranes belong to a third party. So obviously those cranes would then be out of the sale. Like a cargo on board. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Thank you. But what's happening in case of exist mobile equipment on the vessel and the owner and the Sorry, and the owner is the has an ownership right over those equipment. Yes, in, I would like to chip in, maybe. And is that okay with you? Um, can you hear me, Juan Pablo? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay, <laughs> um, so uh, if you look at the advertisements and the and the contracts, the ship is sold with all elements, all its appendages. Yes. Now, things like um, uh, masts or the hull, they are part of the ship and sometimes maybe uh, an engine or navigational equipment is a very good example. Sometimes there is a retention of title there and under Dutch law that only has effect if it is registered. So you must know that somebody else owns the uh, navigational instruments, for instance. Now, um, in uh, Dutch law, I think this goes for most uh, civil law systems. You have um, uh, like a bell on the bicycle that is part of the bicycle. Uh, you can't argue that 
the bicycle is complete without a bell ringing on it, right, to give an example. Now, only in maritime law, there is an intermediate category, uh, fishing nets on a fishing vessel, um, uh, mooring lines, uh, the spare parts mentioned by Peter. Uh, the vessel is still complete without fishing nets. You, you can sail with it. And um, I would say that if you arrest the vessel, you make sure that you arrest all the appendages, so the uh, the bronze second screw, the spare pistons, the fishing nets, and that is what is sold as a whole. If other ownership of those goods is registered, then the actual owner can raise a claim and ask for protection. If not, it is just part of the deal. It will all be sold. Uh, very briefly on the bearable charterer, this um, contract is different from time charterer or voyage charterer because it's not a contract of transportation. It has more to do with lease or with rent. And when you sell a house in a public auction, the tenants are protected. Uh, I do not think this can be in maritime law. I think that uh, you should um, uh, end all uh, contracts. It has to be a clean title. So uh, the same would go for the bare boat uh, charter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, our colleague Zoran Tasic would also like to have a word. So I'm going to pass my seat. Hello, everybody. Long time no Hi. see. <laughs> a, a fittings. Uh, it's also a question applicable to new buildings, ships under construction. Uh, there are lots of material and equipment coming to the shipyard to be installed on the board of the vessel, which is under construction. The ships under construction are normally owned by the shipyard. And the question is whether that applies to the fittings coming to the yards to be installed to the ships. Uh, creation law says yes, providing these items are clearly marked with the number of a new building for which they are purposely delivered to the yard. And also those who deliver the equipment to the yard have an option to register their, their title over such equipment. Pacte Reservati Domini. There is a possibility that you go with the assistance of the shipyard as the owner of the ship under construction to go to the ship registry under construction and register their right uh, title, um, which they reserved over the equipment which they delivered to the yard. In practice, I think very few people do that. Uh, they rely, as Peter, I think, indicated earlier, they rely on their contract under which they uh, retain the title until price is fully paid. So whether it's installed on the ship, whether the ship completed and, and left the shipyard, uh, still such equipment remains the title of those who provided the equipment until the price is fully paid. Um, and they follow the, you know, the destiny of, of the vessel until they have a, a title retained by the, by the suppliers. Um, short remark. Thank you. Well, uh, may I just uh, uh, add that uh, anyhow, it is all about the uh, applicable law. The law would decide what they are selling or not. And uh, the third party who owns uh, equipment or apparatuses of the ship can take it away under uh, the law. So I'm not selling it. So that's my radio, I'll take it with me. But anyhow, just in case that uh, uh, there is a, a law whereby you uh, cannot take it away or it, uh, equipment stays on board the ship, but still belongs to somebody else, then I think in that case, uh, which might be rare and uh, uh, quite exemplary, uh, then the uh, clear certificate would not be an issue if such a case ever exists. Um, there is also poten potential for conflict of laws here. As we know, the law which governs property rights of the ship 
under construction is the law of the country where the ship is. And the contract for sale and purchase of equipment between the yard and the supplier can be governed by English law, for example. And then the English law contract gives the right to the supplier to retain the title because that's how they have agreed. But that, that equipment comes to the yard and according to the creation law, becomes a property of the ship under construction. In other words, property of the shipyard. Uh, so we have a uh, property rights <laughs> granted by the law of the country where the ship is, and you have property rights retained by the seller under English law contract. It is a potential conflict of uh, laws here. And uh, I don't know what the right answer is. But in such a case, there is no clean title and you cannot issue the certificate of, of sale because half of the ship belongs to, to somebody else if the court in that particular country cannot solve that. Mm. Exactly. And if I may say, it is precisely for such issues where there could possibly be an element, I'm not talking about this particular case, any element where for any reason the law of the state where the judicial sale is being held cannot offer free and unencumbered title that, the, 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 that you know, there was general consensus for ensuring that what we are talking about here are sales which are sold free and unencumbered. Then it's up to the buyer. If I was advising a buyer to go and purchase a vessel in country X and there is um, this issue or any other similar issue which may not pass free and unencumbered title, I would be able to advise my clients, look, you're not going to get a free and unencumbered title in that jurisdiction. So if you bid for it, you know what you're getting. If you want a free and unencumbered title, don't bid for it. So it is the certainty of it all, which is very important here. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 